Joining me today is Amio Wiest, who is CEO and co-founder of Goods Unitas. And Abigail, please tell me something about the origin of this startup. All right. Well, yeah, my, my husband and I first started this and it really, it really got spurred in part by the last presidential election and the statistics on how much outside money, how much corporate money, um, both dark and accounted for corporate money influenced the last presidential election. And, and the surprise I think many of us felt with what the, the disparity between the predictions and the results. Okay. And I think Pause just a second. Hey, I want to call. Thank you. Sorry. No. Summer is a great thing for families. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're trying to have a video call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I completely understand. Um, but please continue. Okay. Um, but yeah, but that election really, I think for, for, on my part, made me feel like, how are we going to, as a country uh, and as voters, adapt to the, the fact that we are going to have corporate money in politics for a while? Right. The Citizens United decision, which many people are familiar with, at least that name, um, really kind of solidified that corporations have protected First Amendment protections for speech. And until and unless that is overruled, there's going to be corporate money in politics. And it's going to be there for a while. And how do we, as a country, keep that money from undermining the integrity of the democratic process and dilute our votes basically because we're voting, but a lot of money is going in influencing elections um, that we don't know much about. So that's kind of from my angle. Uh, my husband, Brian, really came up with this idea initially and, and was like, hey, we need a place where, where people can shop in accordance with their beliefs. And so our company kind of started as a as a purchasing site, uh, an Amazon affiliate type of site. And then we quickly realized that that wasn't really what was going to be most successful and reach as many people. What people wanted was the information, the transparency. And so we kind of, we kind of changed course a little bit and became a, a, a wonderful app and then also a website where we provide like the, the political donation kind of a a generalized, like a summary of the political donation history of a company so that consumers can hopefully align their spending with their vote a little bit better. And the purpose of that really is so that it's not to polarize people. It's not to make even more things in our lives political. The purpose is to protect that individual voter's vote. So I'll give you an example. If you someone who who votes a certain way democrat republican independent however they want to vote thinking they are uh, in favor of certain issues and then they go out and buy a pair of shoes unknowingly they are putting money through that company into the political system because that company is often donating to sure. candidates or PACs yep. and a lot of times those companies are not in line with, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're not in line with our, our vote. And so while corporate money is gonna be in politics, we need to kind of know what those corporations are saying politically. Right. Um, if you wanna to choose to disregard that and just buy the product, that's your choice. But many of us want to at least stop undermining our vote um, to, a, to some degree. Um, by our purchases um, and kind of make companies a little bit more accountable for their activity in the political process. Okay, so the hope there is there might actually be a semblance of feedback to the companies from mm -hmm. the consuming public. Okay. Okay, and so this was started what year? Um, I think it's three years ago now. Um, so it, <laughs> it goes by so fast. <laughs> I know, it goes by. Uh, I don't have the exact date when we like incorporated. Um, but yeah, I think it was like two and a half years ago, kind of now. Um, and, you know, it started slowly, like many startups. It started with getting a domain name. And sure. um, 
um, lots of little things. And then we really took off more when we decided we needed to, we found our COO, Amy, who you've met, mm -hmm. and we were smart enough to know our limitations, I think. So Brian and I both have other jobs and we knew that to get this company off the ground, we really needed someone full-time on it. Right. And uh, we have little kids too, so we knew we needed someone else to, to, to do it with us who could really focus on that. And so then we found Amy, who is a, really an entrepreneur by nature. She's right. a wonderful fundraiser. She's a wonderful people person. And she was really able to, to just infuse the company with her energy. Excellent. And uh, be a really nice compliment. Kind of this gets into more of the EX and the dynamic and what is successful for a startup. Um, one of our best successes is the fact that Brian, Amy, and I are a really good triangulation of personalities. Um, and so we create a really strong base for the company. We are all three good at very, di very different things. And uh, that has been very useful because it has allowed us to be a lot more flexible as we encounter challenges that we would never have known we were going to have to address. And EX is one of them. I didn't even know what the acronym <laughs> EX stood for until I read your website. Uh, but it is a concept I'm very familiar with. And it is an issue that um, is, is particularly pertinent to us right now, because we're right at that point in the company where we have enough employees to have to start thinking about it. Okay, so let me ask you about that. What's the headcount of Goods Unite Us now? So um, we have, let's see, we have two, two, three, three um, full-time employees and two interns. Okay. Um, and then Brian and I don't take a salary in the company. And so we are, and we're in the process of making some adjustments, getting a new developer. And so we're kind of, you know, we're right in that. Okay, right there's some the flux there. there. Yeah. Okay, so give me an example, if you can, of uh, an, an obstacle, a challenge that you have overcome, and it can be in, in whatever aspect of, of the space possible, um, but something that, that you have achieved, that you've overcome in the history of this company that you're particularly proud of, something that you would want uh, to, to, you know, just for a second, I'm giving you a bit of a, a podium to, uh, yeah. to, uh, to stand on, to, to boast a little bit, brag about you and your team. What's yeah. something you've accomplished that you're really proud of? Well, um, again, I would say that it kind of goes back to the way the three of us work together has um, created an opportunity for us to be very um, good at different things. And I think one thing that we've done really well is we have we have adapted as we've grown to the new challenges that we face. And in particular, I think my, my role in the company is often the kind of um, one of our, one of our, um, our tech people, our tech advisor describes as the sage, the person that's like, wait, 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 let's slow down. Let's think about how this revenue model would affect the integrity of the company, the Good. mission of the company, the goal of the company. And I think I play that role pretty well. There's also then my, my weaknesses are, are like all the numbers and the finances. And my husband, Brian, is really good at that. And then Excellent. Amy is really good at, at people skills, fundraising, um, communicating, making those, those touches necessary to get investment. Um, and so I'm really proud of the way that the three of us kind of instinctually knew we would work well together. And that has really played out very nicely where one person is weak, the other is strong. And I think that's been um, and will continue to be a wonderful foundation for the company. Um, and then there's been some successes that have kind of developed because of that. Um, one thing I think that is great is we've been able to get investment from people, partly because our team is so strong. Nice. Um, they see that we are, we are bright, we are self-aware, we are, uh, good at communicating, and we also have very different talents. So while Brian can crunch all the numbers and have all of the, you know, the business, he just has this wonderful kind of intuitive business sense. Um, I also bring him down to earth on, you know, how we need to reconcile that with employee experience, with integrity of the community of people that we're creating here and, and, and staying conscious of the fact that we um, 
aren't just supplying information, we are also creating a community of people that rely on that information and that want that information. And then we have a responsibility to that community. So kind of keeping those ideas on the table is, is, is somewhat my role. And then Amy is just so wonderful at moving things forward. Nice. So, yeah. So we've got the sage and the numbers and the mover. And I think those yeah, are right. pretty critical areas to cover. The agitator, the sage, <laughs> yeah, right. And the numbers <laughs> geek, yeah. Excellent. So, so here's another question that uh, that I'll pose to you because I see it being a challenge for a lot of startups and that is We're early on but so there's there's very much a need to do all of the things as quickly as possible uh, and at some point that also includes we need to bring on board our first engineer our first salesperson whoever whoever it is so the challenge there is every hire is critical especially at an early stage startup when there are so few people to fill the roles. But we also feel the need whenever that moment arises that the checkbox has been ticked, yeah, we need to hire person X, we feel the need to do so quickly. And these things are kind of at odds with each other. We need to do this really well. We don't want to just hire the first warm body that we find, but it needs to happen yesterday. Right. How have you found a way to balance those things? I mean, we got kind of lucky initially because Brian found um, our first developer, Harris, um, who we found him, you know, at a, at a very vulnerable point. He was in school. He didn't have a lot of money. He was cheap for us, but he was also just very good and very talented. And so we kind of lucked out because we found him early. He proved to be, you know, very helpful to us. And But now what we're dealing with is the reality that he's moving on in part because he is so talented. Sure. Um, and we are a little less reliable than a company that is fully formed. And right. um, so we completely understand that. Um, and so we are not, so that's one transition that we're working on right now. Um, I think as we do grow and we have a few more options, we've had some more employees come on, we've been able to see more personalities and how they work with the company. I think we're getting a better sense of what type of person will be a good fit for us okay. and i think given our our mission and the fact that there really is kind of a an, an, an advocacy angle to it even though ultimately it's a nonpartisan transportation or transportation trans um uh transparency company right and we're really providing in information and data there's still a passion behind it. There's a goal. There's a, tr you know, trying to kind of protect this, the, the system of our democracy. And right. when we can find people that care about that, they do their jobs even better. And um, they fit in that, uh, into the company even better. So I think we're learning that as we go. We've just been very lucky to find people that, that do care about it. And that's probably because those are the only people who are responding to our very low hourly wages. Um, but as we grow, we're going to be able, we're going to get more candidates, I would assume, and we will really need to keep that in mind in hiring that we want someone that, that I know you're very familiar with this idea that, you know, fits with our mission and our culture, right. uh, because that will make that person just all the more um, happy in their right. work life and a better part of the team. Right, absolutely. So it sounds like the the main piece of wisdom you have to pass along there is hey winning the employee lottery is the way to go <laughs> snapping so, off those low-hanging fruit those really vulnerable very talented college kids yeah gotcha well that's okay so so joking aside that's actually a really noteworthy resource is uh if you are starting a an emerging company in the middle of nowhere boy right. you have a challenge as far yeah. as recruitment goes if you're starting up next to a top tier Big Ten university, which you can practically see from your window, right. that affords you a lot it's more. It's a little reason. different. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you, I, so I think start, you probably. start up in Madison is really what we're saying. That's yeah. it. That's exactly yeah. it. That's the lesson to all of the, all the viewers at home. Start up in Madison. Um, so I think you, you started to answer this next question already, uh, and that is, so we've talked about some of the challenges that you've overcome, some of the things that you're proud of. What's something that you're, that's coming up on the horizon or that you're going through now that 
this is our next big thing. This is our next big obstacle to overcome. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there's probably a couple that I would put in that category. You know, one is going to be hiring. One is going to be finding quality people at the rate that we can pay them in this very, we're in that gangly, awkward stage of growth. You know, we're an adolescent kind of. We've got just enough money to really start needing to prove ourselves. Right. Um, but we don't have an actual enough revenue yet. Um, right. We will, but uh, yes. not yet, to be able to actually pay people um, what probably what they really deserve. So we do need to find people that are good enough, that also are okay, um, you know, taking a little bit of a risk, but also right. waiting for the company to grow and helping the company grow. So they have to be invested. They can't just be an employee. They have to care about it. Um, so that's one challenge we're, we're facing. We're just in that, that real transitional period of the company. Another just a general challenge that we face and we will continue to face at Goods Unite us, I think, is constantly having to reconcile and make sure we maintain consistency and, and um, between our, our practices for, for getting money and using money and our mission. Uh, and I think that because we're a company that cares about transparency and integrity in government and in politics, we need to do it, we need to exhibit it as a company as well. Right. And that is challenging when you are trying to get people to give you money and trying to prove out revenue models because right. you are constantly presented with opportunities um, to lower that or under that kind of you know might just a little bit undermine your integrity or this or that and so we kind of have to i think this company in order to really be successful in the long term has to keep a certain level of integrity has to uh, really protect the community of people that value it and we so we have to find that strike that balance with you know we're, we, we need certain advertising on our site simply to be able to maintain the level of research that we need. And, yep. But how do we do that without undermining the, the very specific values that we are promoting? So I think we're going to have to struggle with that constantly as we grow. Um, but it's particularly challenging right now when we are really in fundraising mode. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people will just tell you, oh, just do this just do this. <laughs> um, and we have to say, no, 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 that one isn't consistent with where we want to be. So, right. If, if, if a, uh, a Russian investment fund swoops in and says, we have a ton we of money for data. you. Yeah. Here's the yeah. challenge, right? <laughs> right? Right. Exactly. Okay. So what would, um, just switching back by, by way of, of closure to our interview, what's something that, uh, folks should know about Goods Unite, the platform, the app. What is it uh, that, that you would want to, uh, to advertise about that to folks? Well, one thing I think that is so great about our company is the data we have. So we have hand curated the data and just made data that is technically publicly available through FEC filings just more more accessible and easier to use and that takes a lot of work so we have a we have a, a, a wonderfully overqualified woman who is uh, working for us just researching companies and updating our data constantly so we're really proud of that data set and that's what one thing that makes the company so wonderful the second thing is we have a great we've been using noble applications here in madison and they've just done a wonderful job with our app and the app is very user friendly and we've been adding some new features to the app that we're really proud of because one thing that's important to me is to recognize that people aren't just republican or democrat so while many of them will care about the 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 very simple graphic of how much of the contributions were Republican and how much were Democrat. Some people, there's more nuance to humans and to voters. And yep. so we've added a some more information so you can make a slightly more informed vote. Um, and so we have a tab that's the politicians tab, which shows you specific politicians that the senior employees of the company have given money to. So okay. if that is what is important to you, you can search by politicians. So you 
if it's really not a Republican Democrat thing, maybe you just care about unions um, or the environment or some particular right. issue, um, then you can kind of look for politicians that support those causes and see who's donating to them. So if you want to be more nuanced, you can. And I think that really adds a lot of integrity to the mission and the company because it's um, acknowledging that people, uh, pe people have, you know, all different, uh, opinions on on many issues that we don't necessarily address individually like we don't go and our app doesn't tell you um, what companies support environmental protections or what companies support you know um, made in America um, what we do is and what we think is just the more efficient and effective uh, and accurate way of addressing all sorts of social issues is from the top down from from elections, basically. So if you care about issue A, B, and C, how you vote is probably going to affect that more than anything else. Um, and so that's what we're helping you with. And so our politician staff kind of gives you a little bit more information. So if you do care more specifically about certain issues, you can actually go in there and find companies that, that might be um, directly helping or hurting that cause. So our data is wonderful our app is wonderful it's all free and we really want to keep it free because i this was something that early on we decided that we really this is important enough that we we want it to be available to people it should be available to people and so it is a free app um and so please excuse if there's a banner ad every once in a while um but uh but we're really proud of, of how it has all worked out um and we're really excited to see where we can take it Excellent, excellent. And and just for my own uh, my own two cents as my own marketing department, uh, I I have to tell you that if you wanted to rebrand this as the Freedom of Information app, oh, I, I got to tell you, I think that's that's money on the table. I'm just throwing that, that out for awesome, free. Awesome, dude. We love it. Yeah. <laughs> and presumably this is available on the iOS App Store. Is it on Google as well? Um, right now, it's just I, uh, actually I shouldn't even say that. I think it's available on both now. Yeah, we've been making we've been making a lot of improvements. So if it's not, it's coming very soon. But I'm pretty sure it's available on both venues. All right. So look yeah. for Goods Unitas on the iOS and Google App Stores, and learn more about where your consumer money is going in terms of political affiliation. Exactly. All right. Well, Abigail, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. And best of luck with the progress with Goods Unitas. All right. Thank you so much, Keith. It was really fun. All right. Yeah, you bet.